And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for July 6. Tropical depression 5 in the Atlantic, keeping everyone guessing as to whether it will become a brief tropical storm or not. So far it hasn't on day 188 of the year so far. 31 storms have formed so far around the world. On day 36 of the Atlantic hurricane season, 5L moving away from Bermuda and an area of interest that looks like it could have some good potential for forming off the US East Coast next week. Day 53 in the Eastern Pacific and we have three areas of interest active here. 60% now on the Eastern one or the National Hurricane Center go higher at 80% on that one. We'll probably interact with the middle disturbance there. And in the Western Pacific still nothing happening and nothing expected anytime soon. It's still quite dead. In the Southern Hemisphere we've also got nothing going on at this point and the South Pacific animation will be out on Friday night. Tropical Depression 5, there's its current location. You can just about see Bermuda at the bottom of the screen there. 35 mile an hour winds, a pressure of 1009. It's 398 miles northeast of Bermuda, 36 north, 59.3 west. Might become a brief tropical storm before turning post tropical. We'll have an ASCAP pass a little bit after this broadcast where we'll find out a lot more about whether this has reached tropical storm status or not sadly I won't be on there to bring that to you uh, but we'll see what happens with that and looking at the satellite imagery you can see the progression of that very fast moving cyclone now in 5L moving out towards the northeast 30% in the Gulf of Mexico and also that little wave there in the main development region has just been tagged by the National Hurricane Center as well a small chance of development underneath that Saharan air layer Looking at the Gulf, you can see that little disturbance that will become that 30% system very soon. The Eastern Pacific, um, no real signs of that 40% system becoming a present concern just yet. That 20% area is already established, that disorganized area there towards the right hand side of the circle and out in the central pacific not marked on here there is another 20 percent chance uh, system that could develop out there western pacific is very quiet again more rainfall on the northern reaches there over japan over china already dealing with flooding and rainfall issues it is continuing unfortunately for those areas over the next 24 hours with a lot of rainfall by the looks of things in some areas there. The South Pacific a little bit livelier than what we've been seeing recently. A few thunderstorms brewing. Um, if you drew a line pretty much from Papua New Guinea all the way to Fiji and beyond. The Indian Ocean, the Northern Indian Ocean that is, um, an area of interest almost. Uh, some big deep convection blowing up off the western coast of India. We were eyeing it up once or twice for potential development a few days ago. Sea surface temperatures today, the Eastern Pacific, you can see 30 degrees Celsius waters uh, holding on there for parts of Guerrero and Oaxaca in Mexico, also into the Guatemala coastline and out to sea, fairly warm. The Atlantic Ocean, 30 degrees Celsius waters that continue to expand the Gulf Stream looking pretty good, extending its arm well out towards the northeast there as well, 26 degree waters all the way up to where that depression is right now. In the Indian Ocean, Fairly warm waters there off the western coast of India and off to the eastern coast as well. 30 degrees plus over a lot of areas there. And in the western Pacific, uh, the South China Sea fairly warm again. Uh, still pretty much identical to what we've been seeing in recent updates. The temperatures very warm all the way up to the southern tip of Japan. And also to note there, the Gulf of Thailand quite warm as well there. The sea surface temperature anomalies look like this, very similar to what we've been seeing recently in the Eastern Hemisphere in the West. That La Nina still imposing itself, the Eastern Pacific Tropical Zone not looking too bad there, so a few warm anomalies. And in the Atlantic, it's very hit and miss in the mid latitudes, but down in the tropics, the warm areas there above average. This is Tropical Depression 5L right now and you can see, well, it's been sort of struggling but blowing up with convection in those latest frames. 
Um, the circulation there partially exposed, but that blow up really helps it a little bit in those latest frames just as we reach nightfall now. Um, so it's really um, touch and go now whether this becomes a tropical storm. My inkling is that if it does, it would be for a very short time indeed, maybe only a three hour period. Um, but uh, before turning post-tropical, because the models are suggesting that will happen very soon indeed, within the next 12 hours or so it would appear, and it is starting to take on that appearance as well of something that is becoming gradually more post-tropical. Baroclinicity might help it reach that tropical storm status though before it does completely complete the transition. Uh, so this is what the models are saying, uh, you can see the National Hurricane Center buried in there, the uh, grey outline calling for that tropical storm anytime. Wind shear is on the rise and will continue to rise but it will really skyrocket by the 7th. Sea surface temperatures starting to drop a little bit, it is below the 26 degree threshold just a little bit. Relative humidity is neither here nor there. This eventual track will take it towards the good old British Isles in the end but won't be anywhere near tropical by that point on july 6 2016 blas was a category 4 in the eastern pacific but that could not beat nepartak which reached category 5 on this day and i'm sure a lot of you remember it well force 13 tracked this storm as well category 5 on both the 6th and the 7th its first peak was today its second peak would be tomorrow and there's still debate up to this day over which peak was the strongest. So in the Atlantic the next name on the naming list could happen anytime it's Edward followed by Faye. In the Eastern Pacific we're looking out for Christina followed by Douglas. In the Central Pacific the next name on list one is Hone and there could be a chance for that this week with the 20% area out in the Central Pacific. In the West Pack, there's no chance anytime soon of Sinlaku, but we'll look out for it. And in the North Indian Ocean, the next name on list one is Gatti. In the Southern Hemisphere, then, we've got uh, Imogen, the next name in Australia, followed by Joshua. In Fiji, in the South Pacific, we've got Yolanda, followed by Zazu. And we've also got that new, fresh look on the naming list in the Southwest Indian Ocean. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an ultimate fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan Benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.